Hey guys, welcome back. It's Jen. Today I'm going to show you the vanilla. Wow, that was my best vanilla screw up ever. I had to keep it in. What even happened there? Time for an instant replay. Vanilla. Wow, I sound even dumber in slow motion. Let's try that again. I'm going to show you my vanilla cake recipe that I use when I'm carving a cake, sculpting cake, shaping a cake, whatever you want to call it. Whether you're shaping a heart, a dog, a pumpkin, this cake won't let you down. It's strong, it's mean, it's lean. Okay, well, it's not lean, it's cake. But that doesn't mean it's not absolutely moist and tender and delicious inside. The only difference about this cake is the pores are just closer together. So when you go to carve it, it doesn't fall apart like a dilapidated building. Where did that word come from? I never say the word dilapidated. Must be some fragments left over from when I studied the SATs. And don't you dare ask me how long ago that was. <laughs> Here's the tools you're gonna need if you wanna take a quick screenshot of this. You can also use an electric hand mixer. First things first, you wanna take your butter, eggs, and milk out of the refrigerator to warm to room temperature. Having these three ingredients at room temperature is essential in this recipe. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and then put your room temperature butter in the stand mixer using the paddle attachment and cream until just smooth. Then add in your sugar, whip that on medium high speed. I use six on the stand mixer until fluffy and light in color. Do this for about five minutes. Stop and scrape the bowl and then do it another five minutes, so 10 minutes total. Now add your eggs on low speed Add them in one at a time, adding the next egg only after the prior egg is fully incorporated. Okay, I have a confession. I love how this tastes with just the butter and sugar and eggs. I have to be like, Jen, don't taste it. It'll throw off the balance of the cake batter. Now put your milk, vegetable oil, and pure vanilla extract in your liquid measuring cup. In a separate bowl, just hand whisk together your flour, baking powder, and salt. Then I use a half a cup measuring cup and I take a heaping cup full of the flour mixture and that's fully mixed in. Then I put in a third of my milk mixture until fully mixed and repeat this alternation until it's gone. So it'll be flour, milk, flour, milk, flour, milk, flour. <laughs> I'm actually, Mr. Miyagi, you think I'm teaching you how to bake, but I'm actually teaching you karate. Show me whisk the flour. Show me pour the milk. Show me crack the egg. Ay, ay, ay! I love that scene. It gives me the chills. It's the best. The batter's done. Grease those cake pans. I highly recommend homemade cake goop. Super easy. It's just equal parts all-purpose flour, vegetable oil, and vegetable shortening all mixed together. Pour the batter in the pans half full. Tap the sides to get out any air bubbles. And to level out the batter, and put it in the oven. Over baking your cakes is the kiss of death. So I check it after 20 minutes. If it's still jiggly, then I add another 10 minutes. When it stops being jiggly, I check every five minutes with a toothpick. And when it's close, I check every two minutes until a toothpick comes out from the center clean. All right, it's done. If it's domed at all, you can put a kitchen towel over the top and with your oven mitt, just push it down flat gently. This smells amazing. I love when there's just a little batter left over where I can make myself a little cupcake. And then I have these two little voices in my head that fight. Wait till the cupcake's cool enough, it'll taste better. Don't tell me what to do, I'm starving. And that voice always wins. So I take a bite of my hot cupcake. And even though it's burning my tongue and I have to open my mouth to vent the heat, do I spit it out? No, I keep eating it. And it's delicious. Let the cake cool in the pan for 10 minutes before flipping it out. And if you want some extra assurance, you can just use the toothpick to run around the edge of the cake to make sure it comes out nicely. 10 minutes is up, time to flip the cake out. Look at that, perfection. Let this cool to room temperature before frosting it or freezing it. I like to freeze my cakes because it makes them even more moist. If you do put them in the freezer, Make sure to wrap them in plastic wrap first and then put them in a Ziploc freezer bag or gently wrap them in tin foil. If you're liking this video, let me know by clicking that thumbs up button, hit subscribe, and click on the bell so you receive notifications 
every time I post a new video. Now you know how to make this delicious cake for carving and you know karate. Check out my upcoming related videos, five secrets to carving cakes and six secrets to frosting those cakes. How do you frost those heart-shaped cakes and or pumpkin cakes or puppy cakes? It sounds intimidating, but it's actually really easy. So just do it. Make that domed cake or sphere cake. Thank you guys so much for watching and I can't wait to see you next time. I would have never guessed that this video would have a Karate Kid reference. You just never know what's going to happen around here.